so a lot of people have asked me about what is CHR2, what is YF, what, YFP, what is MPHR, and what's the difference between all of these. I'll do a quick overview of action potentials, ion channels, and proteins. So action potentials are generated through the flow of ions through ion channels, and ion channels are proteins that are expressed on the membrane of a neuron. So let's just draw our neuron. And the neuron will have ion channels, and these are like doors that separate the inside of the neuron from the outside of the neuron. And both inside and outside the neuron, you'll have different types of ions floating around. Sodium, calcium, potassium, and chloride, and also outside. Sodium, potassium, and chloride. And now these ion channels are typically selective to uh, a certain charge of ions. So this green one might be selective to calcium and sodium, um, and also might be selective to potassium. While as these pink ones might be selective to chloride. Okay. And so at, as we know, in an action potential, so if this is the y-axis is time, and the, sorry, the x-axis is time, and the y-axis is millivolts, so volts is simply the difference in ionic concentration inside and outside the cell, your typical action potential will start at baseline, quickly go up, and then drop back down to baseline. And this all happens endogenously within the cell. The ion channels are opening and closing, opening and closing on their own. Okay, so now you might ask, how could we uh, generate an action potential? So how could we artificially generate an action potential? Well, one solution that scientists have come up with is to simply put in more ion channels and make these ion channels controllable with light. So controlled by light. So the way they did this is they genetically engineered ion channels that are activated by light, and they're able to genetically express these on the cell membrane of neurons through viral and gen genetic transgenic strategies. So in this case, this ion channel is CHR2, we're going to call it. And CHR2 stands for channel rhodopsin. Channel rhodopsin. Rhodopsin means rhodop, as you know, opsin is light. So it's activated by light. And it happens to be 488 nanometers, which is blue light. And what this channel does is it lets in calcium and sodium. So it's sensitive to positive ions. And as you can guess, positive ions inside the cell will increase the membrane voltage of the cell, initiating an action potential. And after the action potential is initiated, um, the cell has built-in dynamics to return this voltage back to baseline. And so now you can temporarily control each neuron with light activation. So I could stimulate here, I could stimulate here, I could stimulate here. And what you'll see is action potential, and it'll drop back down, action potential, and it'll drop back down. So you can stimulate and generate these action potentials in the neuron. And so now what is YFP? Well, YFP is yellow fluorescent protein. Yellow fluorescent protein. And it's exactly that. It's a protein and it fluoresces a yellow color. And typically, it's bound to our CHR2 ion channels because CHR2 uh, itself, you can't see it by eye if you were to look at your neurons under a microscope. 
so you don't know if your neurons were expressing the CHR2. But, so if you looked at the microscope, you wouldn't be able to see CHR2, but you would be able to see the yellow fluorescent protein. So you know that wherever there's yellow, there's also the CHR2, and that way you can tell if you only want to label a certain population of cells, for example, you can confirm that the population you want is expressing the CHR2 and not the population that you don't want. So usually the term that we use, the formal term, is CHR2YFP. And this name for this particular gene is usually implied. The YFP is usually implied. Um, you can have different fluorescent colors that can tag this protein. In this case, it just happens to be yellow fluorescent protein. There's also green fluorescent protein. There's a red fluorescent protein called TD tomato. So you can really vary it up. Um, so what is yellow fluorescent protein on itself? Because sometimes people will say, people will show um, YFP controls, right? So what does that mean? That means that in this neuron, or in this animal, a group of animals, Yellow fluorescent protein is just expressed endogenously within your cell of interest, and it has its natural ion channels, but the yellow fluorescent protein isn't bound to any transgenic, uh, sorry, uh, engineered ion channels or engineered proteins. And so if you shine light onto this cell, nothing will happen. And so this animal can effectively become your control because it underwent the same surgery and the same experimental protocol, but it doesn't have the um, ion channel of interest that you're looking at, or the manipulation of interest, for example. And so now, what is NPHR? Well, NPHR, like CHR2, is a genetically engineered ion channel, so usually it also is tagged with YFP. And what we have is, so these are the channels that already existed in the cell. CHR2 is an ion channel that's activated mostly by yellow light, which is 593 nanometers. Um, or it's also activated by green light, which is around 550 nanometers. And it's unique because... Well, not unique, but it's it's different than CHR2 because, oops, wrong direction, because it lets in chloride ions. Okay, so what this means is now if we go back to our drawing board with our action potential, this is our typical action potential. Now what happens is if we stimulate with yellow light right here, we're going to cause a decrease in membrane potential, so offsetting the natural increase, and we're going to prevent the action potential from happening. And now the thing with yellow uh, light stimulation is that it, ha it has to happen throughout the whole time course, so it must happen continuously. Otherwise, the cell can still generate action potentials uh, in the pauses of light stimulation. So like when you stop stimulating, the cell could fire. So you don't want that, so you want to inhibit really throughout the whole time period of your manipulation. Um, so that's the difference. Whereas in CHR2, you want to do short bursts of light stimulation. Right here. Right? Um, okay, so yeah, one thing I should put in is there's also these fluorescent markers in this NPHR. Um, ion channel. So what does NPHR stand for? It stands for halorhodopsin. Halorhodopsin. So something I want to add is that there are many types of, ion ch of engineered ion channels. Many types of engineered ion channels. And they can vary by activation wavelength, right? And that is basically, you know, it's this, it's what color activates that ion channel. So it can range from blue to orange to green to red. Um, and it can also be excitatory versus inhibitory. 
so inhibitory. And it can have different time scales. So some of them uh, respond faster, some of them are slower, some of them are more precise, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so those are some things to consider when you're designing your experiment. How you know which one do you choose? What do you want to choose? So NPHR and CHR2 are simply two examples of the wide variety of toolbox that we have available for us.